Gary, you've been fighting for the organic brand for decades now, and uh, there's been deregulation again around genetically engineered alfalfa by the USDA. H how are you dealing with that? What is your plan? Uh, what's going on? Because this, it was suppressed and then it's it's back to deregulation. Yeah. How are you feeling? No, and, and, and GE alfalfa is a game changer, to be honest, for organic, because of course alfalfa goes to hay, and in organics, the farmers, the animals have to have access to pasture and they've got to have hay. We've, we're trying to keep down the corn and grain and feed and so forth. Um, this was a devastating decision uh, and it has to be fought. So we're f actually fighting on all levels. We have a uh, basically five part campaign. There is an appeal. We submitted an 84 page appeal on Friday. Um, there is, and on, on a variety of points, there's a, a massive research effort now because we're taking going through carefully not only 13 years of exper actual experience with genetically engineered crops such as soy and corn and canola and cotton where we now know that there's a tripling or a quadrupling of herbicides needed. We now know that there are um, much higher costs of seeds for farmers. We now know that there are super weeds exploding that are going to require even stronger chemicals. Let's remember these seeds are owned by chemical companies. Um, so, but we also need and to... And they might pollinate an organic farm nearby. Oh, well, that's or, absolutely the issue. The absolutely issues. is cross-pollination. And, 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 and there's, we're also gathering the organic data to the counter that's showing higher and higher yields, that the promise of GE yields are not there. So, but to cut right to it, the issue at hand is, is that we voters have to speak now because we don't have the money on the other side. We need labeling in order for consumers to make a choice. And 80% of consumers, whether they buy organic or not, say they would like to know. So um, we're uh, very much focused now on a broad uh, coalition of uh, NGOs, of uh, farmer groups, uh, not only organic advocates, but conventional farmer groups who just don't want these big seed companies, chemical companies, telling them what, you know, this is a matter of choice, right? It's choice for farmers and choice right. for consumers, and they don't want to be told what to do. So we're targeting a campaign aimed at Congress and the White House saying, look, we may not be able to stop GE crops right now, but what you need to do is you need to put in the protections for organic. Because when you let these crops out and they are going to contaminate, it literally spells the end of organics unless we put a stop to it. The USDA's own organic seal is in jeopardy. So we have a very broad-based coalition, including libertarians uh, and others. But, uh, but some people also in your ranks just feel that you aren't taking a strong enough stand. Yeah, and there's, there's a voice out there criticizing Stonyfield and the others who've been out there saying that this idea of accepting that GE is here is a, is a, is a capitulation. But GE meaning genetically, genetically engineered, engineered just sorry. so they don't go to not, so gen not General Electric, <laughs> right. right. No, and, and, and let me just be very direct about that. 92% of soy in America, 91% of cotton, 90 plus percent of uh, corn are already genetically engineered. Uh, I regret to say, because I would love to have it stopped, that this genie is out of the bottle and we're not going to put it back. The multi, and I'm not talking about millions, I'm talking about billions of dollars of investment now mounting in this, is, we're not going to stop it. What we have to do now is we have to take measures to protect organic. And we have to label. Thank you, Gary. My pleasure.